Hello everybody, and welcome back. I think, I think, I got my pen. Finally working. Uh, hope everybody has had a great weekend. I know it's been a few days since our last stream, but I've been having some technical difficulties getting my pen to just consistently work here. And uh, it's kind of getting to the point where I'm probably just going to need to buy a new one. But uh, I'm going to get as much life out of, the, out of this thing as I can because they're, they're pretty expensive to get a new one. But uh, yes, if you've been following along with our stream, then you have more than likely seen the last sculpt or at least uh, a little bit of it. We've been, we have been working on the Great Prince of the Forest. I have since done a render since I've been, um, I haven't been able to use my pen too often, so I've been using my mouse a lot, and uh, you know, I can't do too much sculpting with just a mouse. So I ended up doing a render of this. This is done in Keyshot, Great Prince of the Forest, Bambi's Daddy. And uh, yeah, today, today we're gonna be doing something completely new, starting from scratch here with a z just a sphere in ZBrush. I was gonna say a Z sphere, it's not a Z sphere. Just a normal old sphere, a point sphere. And we're gonna be sculpting this guy over here. This is my sister's dog, or uh, at least one of them. She has two, and I would like to try to sculpt this beautiful pupper in kind of a kind of a cartoony, stylized version. So we're gonna see how that goes. Uh, we're starting from scratch. Uh, I don't know the exact direction that we're gonna go. I have a bunch of reference images over on my other monitor over here, so I'll show you guys this cute pupper. He, he's adorable. Uh, he's he's like five or so now, I think. But yes, they have two golden retrievers. They're like <laughs> they're like the perfect model dog. That's both of them there. Uh, I couldn't really find a great. Uh, I, I ripped these off of my sister's Instagram. I tried. I couldn't find a, a very good profile image of them. That was like the best I could get. But uh, yes, he's very cute. He's got a lot of extra, a lot of extra skin and stuff going on. And there he is, just being very, a very cool, very cool puppy. All right. But uh, here's an image of uh, 101 Dalmatians. Obviously, uh, this probably isn't the exact style that I'm going to go for. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to make the eyes necessarily this large or go in this direction quite as far. But like I said, we're going to go ahead and start this right now and see how far we get. And as always, you guys can feel free to ask any questions along the way. And yeah, let's get into it. Ooh, that's cozy. All right. So beginning with our sphere, as we do so very often, I'm going to start by duplicating our sphere. Kind of use this one as the base and then just start blocking out exactly, well not blocking, maybe sphering out, but uh, yeah, just kind of blocking out where these shapes are gonna need to go. Make sure that my pen isn't gonna bug out on me again. I've been having, you know, ever since I got this tablet, it's had, and I think this is just a common issue where the pen all of a sudden will stop registering for a moment. Hey, Metal Penguin, thank you for the follow and welcome to the stream. How you guys doing? And Hubert, got the whole crew already. What's going on, guys? So I've had this problem where my pen will just stop registering on uh, on my tablet. I have to like pull it away for a moment and then put it back, and then it will, and then it will work just fine. But uh, lately, I've been having this problem, and this is a new one. It's only happened twice, but the pen button will get like stuck down, and it. It's very strange and I have to, like I can't, I've, I've, I've rolled back the driver to the older version and I'm hoping now that that will completely get rid of that issue. I'm not sure, but that is, that is my hope. We will find out and see how it goes. But yes, for those that are just joining us, welcome guys. This is my sister's dog, my sister's golden retriever. And I will be trying to sculpt him in a... Uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to go like straight, straight Disney style on this one, but we're going to play around with it and try to find exactly what we want to do here. Probably should have used just a cube for this. Would have been a little bit easier. But we'll figure it out as we go. 
I'm just using some spheres, a move brush, and just pushing and pulling a bunch of garbage around. But yes, very cute, very cute puppy. Very, very adorable. <laughs> Don't change anything. It's perfect. All right, we're just gonna this right here. Let me go ahead and render this real quick. Beautiful. All done. Uh, and let's see who else we got here. HUD boy as well. What's going on, guys? Uh, is this a Christmas gift? Hmm, maybe. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Who's to say? I guess we'll we'll find out. Let's uh let's get another sphere. Or I'll just pull this down. Now, remember that during this stage, you know, you're not super concerned. Oh, I know what's wrong. Gosh, none of my br my brushes have been like broken. Been trying to figure it out. Spotlight projection was on. There we go. That was so strange. All right. So uh, remember that during this stage, you're not super concerned with proportions. It's more of just let's try to get some geometry in there and uh, have something that we can hold for at least a little bit of this volume. So just making sure that we have at least some kind of neck, some kind of base for our head geometry to sit upon and then probably start merging uh, a few things together here just to keep it nice and rough during this stage really low dynamesh probably go even lower than that let's go like what is it? i think it's like 32 yeah cool all right and we're just gonna start filling in some volumes like i said i have some other images over here off screen so, so cute. Let me try to find that little profile image. Not a very good profile image, but it will have to do for what we have, right? Uh, Pro, Pro 4210, what's going on? My phone is freaking out on me. So much appeal already, thank you, thank you. Yes, yeah, so uh, if there's anybody new here, I see that there's uh, quite a few people in here now. If you've been following along with the last streams uh, on the Great Prince of the Forest, I finally did render this guy. I did it while I was having some of my trouble with my pen over Thanksgiving. Uh, so this is rendered in Keyshot. Um, here's some quick turnarounds of the final, final sculpt there. These are just screenshots from ZBrush. This is the only actual render up top. But yeah, he was a lot of fun to work on, and uh, if you are new and have not seen any of this at all, and you are interested in that sculpting process, all the videos for that guy and, you know, everything else on here is over on my YouTube channel, which is, <coughs> excuse me, Ugh. wrong pipe, which is just uh, YouTube slash Folygon. But yeah, we'll continue on here with our puppy, and we will eventually, eventually get to somewhere around that level of quality. We'll, we'll see. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we'll just stick here. I, I, it seems like everybody's liking the spheres quite a lot. <laughs> just render this out. Alright, so let's uh, get a little bit more thin on the face, right? we got to start getting a little bit more boxy. Let's, here, let's toggle off those ears for a moment. So get a little bit more boxy, get a little bit more raised up, you know... Pull in a little bit on the schnoz, probably, and eh, maybe about thick enough there, but in terms of the head, there's quite a lot more volume we can get back through here, and we'll just keep pushing and pulling some of this stuff around with our move brush. And once you get to, or start getting to a place where you're, you're getting a little bit more comfortable with your proportions, that's when I start using stuff like my pinch brush and some of my other tools to begin blocking out the planes of whatever you're sculpting. In this, in this case, the planes of our puppy dog face. But we'll keep going here on just shaping up a few more of these little, little pieces over here for our ears, I guess. And just start pushing and pulling things around. When you're starting from a sphere, Definitely, you want to take your time. There's no rush at this stage. Definitely, don't 
push too far forward too quickly because you'll end up getting into a little bit of a weird area where you're starting to get into secondary forms and your primary forms just really aren't there yet and you, they need quite a bit more work. So I try to take my time during the stage. You know, there's no no rush moving forward. It's not like not like it's a race or anything. Uh, what a gorgeous buck. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Haven't seen the deer. Thank you, Gliffy. Welcome back to you as well, as well as everybody else. The pen is working right now. I ended up rolling back the drivers on it I was talking about earlier. And I'm hoping that it's more of a driver issue and not a, um, not a hardware issue with the actual pen. If that's the case, I'll have to... I'll have to just buy a new one, and they're pretty expensive. They're like, uh, like a hundred bucks, I think, like ninety-ish dollar U.S. dollars. And I don't want to do that. I mean, I haven't, I haven't had this tablet that long, and these pens last, last forever. I don't know about you guys. Like, if you have, so this is the Pro Pen One. It's the only pen that works with this particular tablet. But um, uh, the pen nibs on these things, they last forever. I just recently changed out a pen nib just because it was like a little bit angled on one side and I just didn't want to deal with it anymore so I just swapped it out. Like, <laughs> you, these pen nibs last forever unless you're just like really digging into your tablet which really I don't think is necessary. I did that with my first tablet and I, I regretted it later after I learned that, you know, lightness is typically better off. I'm, I'm trying out one of these soft pen nibs right now. They're like the gray-ish pen nibs. You probably can't see it on camera, I'm sure. But, uh, I don't know. I, I'm kind of digging it. Uh, it's kind of nice. It's got like a a little bit more of a fabric-y feel. A little bit more of a papery feel to it, almost. Like you're sketching on paper. I don't I don't really know how to describe it. It's, it's a little bit softer, I guess. It's not, you know, not a hard plastic thing. I'm trying it out, you know. I'm enjoying it so far. I've pretty much always used the hard pen nibs, so it's nice to nice to try something new. All right, so we're continuing to block this out, and I'm getting to the stage where I'm just, I'm beginning to think about in the back of my head at least how how much are we gonna stylize this boy. I don't want to push it so far that it's not recognizable as the same dog. I think he's got some very distinct features that we could pull in even if we do you know go with some of the stylization to the Disney Disney side of things I was pulling up the image for the hundred and one Dalmatians earlier so maybe we could go a little bit of that direction I guess I guess we'll see we'll think about this some more let's continue to get some of these volumes in here and whoa come on back I am going to use, I'm going to use my damn standard brush, a little easy mouse, and just very quickly block in a little bit of a mouth line very quickly, still keeping things very rough. Uh, mouth is definitely, you know, way too long, so we're going to be pulling that back. And the reason I do stuff like that little mouth line through there is it helps me figure out little things like... It just gives you more stuff to reference against itself. So it helps me figure out, you know, based on that line, is the top of the mouth too tall? Is the bottom too short? Maybe it's too rounded down here, which I would say is probably the case right now. And uh, just having some more information in there for some of this stuff. Even if you're just like quickly sketching and blocking something in like what I just did right now, it can be very helpful. Help you, you know, get past some of that that awkward stage. Is the directionality of this, the end of the, the uh, schnoz here, correct? I'd probably want to angle it a little bit more. And uh, again, try to pull out or uh, pull back in some of that lower portion of this, this jowl. Rob's a little bit too thick based on what we're doing here now. We'll continue to mess with this. 
feels very underbitey, so we'll start start pushing that back. Try to just narrow that out quite a bit. And still keeping this very rough, flowing back up here into the face. Let's see. Coming around here, getting some more volume around the eyes. Maybe we can try to get some of those very um, uh, expressive eyebrows he's got going on. Try to carry this through some of these shapes here. And just trying to get some volume in here. And again, I like to use my pinch brush a lot during this stage to figure out some plane changes where some of these shapes are going. And just start pinching stuff up and keep going from here. And again, you know, I'm at a point where I'm starting to get into some of the secondary forms on here, on this shape. I don't even have perspective on, not that it really matters too much right now. But at this stage, you know, I do recommend trying to stay in those larger shapes for as long as you can. But at least for me, it's a lot easier to figure out some of those larger shapes once I do start getting a little bit more into some of those secondary things, whether it's just the ears or you know, if it's quickly sketching in a line for the mouth, anything like that that can help you figure that stuff out is uh, typically a good idea to kind of push forward on. Let's see here. Uh, Vikum, Kev Vikum, welcome to the stream. Always watching on YouTube. This is my first time watching live. Well, welcome. Hello. Uh, in your country, it is almost midnight right now. 20 till midnight. Well, that's... So hold on, you are exactly 12 hours uh, behind Behind me? Would it be behind? Or would it be, I think it would be ahead. All right, isn't that correct? It's Monday there. I believe that is correct, but wow, that that is a huge time difference. Well, I'm glad you were <laughs> able to come out. Don't, uh, don't stay up too late, you gotta get your, gotta get your beauty sleep. I get your Buddha rest. Your booty. Your booty sleep. Alright. <laughs> let's um let's round out the top of this head more. Start um fixing some of the awkward shapes that we got going on. Probably get a little bit more of a flat back here. Whoa. Oh my god, please. No. Oh my god, this pen. My pen just broke again. I did figure out a quick fix for this though. This is ridiculous. Because I'm pretty sure it's the front button. That's so ridiculous. It's really hard for me to use that back button as well just because of the way I hold my pen. That's really annoying. So, it looks like I'm probably going to end up buying a new pen. It's frustrating. Like I said, they're pretty expensive. They're like a hundred bucks. Oh man, it's so hard for me to do this this way. So for some reason, I thought I had this fixed. For some reason, this button gets stuck and then I can't, I can't even click this now. What's going on? I can't use my pen because as soon as I put it next to the screen, it thinks that that front button is pressed down and therefore it, it breaks and freaks out. I'm gonna, I, it's just very frustrating and hard to get used to using my pen in a completely different way from the way I've been doing it for the past literally like five years. So I'll try to, uh, I'll try to use it this way for a little bit. We'll see how this goes. Like I said, very, very annoying. I'm probably just gonna end up buying a new one, I guess. I thought I fixed it. I rolled back the driver on the tablet and um, that was working for a long time there, but it looks like now the answer is that it is a hardware issue and that sucks. 
I didn't change anything. I didn't do anything new. So. I don't know. I don't know. I went through the, the five stages of grief very quickly. I'm now on acceptance. The fifth the fifth stage already. <laughs> uh, I'm also... Uh, for this, I'm probably going to terminate it into a collar, uh, just so that I can 3D print this. Um, so, let me, let me do that really quick. Let me put a collar in here. Let me try... Uh, probably just a cylinder. So we'll initialize into a 212 cylinder. Which is this thing here. Ah, this is so hard to move. I wish it was the other button that broke. Brr. Let me do let me set this up really quick here. And we'll try to get used to this. Uh put it on your Christmas list. Maybe Santa will bring me a new pen. There you go. Let's see. Um, currently always learning from YouTube, never touched ZBrush for almost two years, uh, and then two months ago watched your YouTube channel and your ZBrush modeling is awesome. Well, thank you. That's very nice of you. Uh, so I bought your basic tutorial uh, because you almost forgot everything in ZBrush. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for, for purchasing the tutorial. I appreciate that a lot, and uh, I hope that it helps you out a lot as well. Uh, that includes my... Oh, I'm not sure if you are the one who emailed me recently. Uh, Horizon, Horizon Cut Studios, thank you for the follow and welcome to the stream. How are you doing? I'm not sure if you are the one who emailed me here recently about the UI or not. Let me know if you are, because I did... Let me know if you got that email, I think. Because I don't think I ever heard back from that person, I can't remember. But yes, thank you. Thank you for all the kind words and grabbing that. I hope it helps you out a lot. And as always, let me know if uh, you have any questions along the way. Feel free to shoot me an email, and I'd be happy to help. Uh, what's going on, Quick Draw? Welcome to the stream. Give me just a moment here. So annoying dealing with this pen now. So we're probably going to be a little bit slower today as I try to get used to this. Been trying to do a likeness sculpt and have been working with orthographics to line up the bulk of the major forms. When I go into perspective, the shapes are very off. How would you su suggest approaching a likeness sculpt to achieve the best results? Uh, don't work in perspective or orthographic by itself. I would say be switching between the two of them uh, uh, frequently. So what I do when I'm sculpting is when I'm during, like if I'm during the block out phase and I'm just trying to figure out some like basic shapes and I'm looking from the profile a lot, I'll keep perspective off because I'm mainly just trying to figure out the silhouette. But then once you like start getting a little bit farther, I'll toggle on and off between perspective and orthographic as much as I can, just so I get a, a feel for my silhouette in orthographic, and then I get a feel for how things are actually shaping up with just the, the basic perspective. And if it's something like really large, sometimes I'll just increase the perspective a lot, or uh, if it's really small, sometimes you need to, uh, to lower that. It just kind of depends on the scale of your scene and a few other factors, but uh, in general, just toggle between the two of them uh, as often as you can, and I think I think you'll be fine. The more you do it, the more you'll you'll figure out uh, what works a little bit better for you, for you. Uh, doing good. Love your work. Thanks for streaming. Well, thank you. You guys are being so nice today. I appreciate it. And uh, Juan Franco, welcome to the stream. Uh, fan of your work, watching from my office right now. Cool stream. <laughs> well, welcome. Welcome and thank you. Appreciate it. 
How's everybody doing? Uh, we um, we need some some change here, and what's going on? Wrapping around the face here into the mouth. Let's see. I know, I know, I'm getting a lot of volume through here, but I'll knock that back. Let me just keep wrapping that. So again, we're still still in these early stages. It's definitely definitely getting some definitely getting some taper here, aren't we? I have pet this dog so many times. I should have should have studied. <laughs> should have studied him more. This is my sister's dog, by the way. One of my sister's very cute puppies. She has two golden retrievers. This one's name is Weston. He's the older of the two. And he is totes cray cray adorbs. And he's got more skin than he knows what to do with. You could fit two dogs inside of this guy. <laughs> All right, let's see. Again, this is so frustrating working with this pen right now, and I I apologize. I'm going to complain probably, probably for the next two hours. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's like pull in this angle here. Start planing that out a little bit more. No problem, no problem, quick draw. Hopefully that'll help you out. I think, uh, I really do think just kind of jumping back between the two as often as you can will really work. What ends up happening is if you're in orthographic for so long, you'll be rotating around and you're you're automatically going to try, I think, to make up for the lack of perspective by sculpting things way out of proportion. And then when you finally turn on perspective, you're like, whoa, what What did I do? Why, why is everything looking so crazy? Just because I don't have a, a, a super extreme version of that right now. I guess we can very quickly load in um, our last boy, the Great Prince of the Forest. So we can show a very good example really quick. So this is what we've been working on for the past, we did this last week, right? So without perspective on, you know, if you're sculpting on his body here and you're like, you're at this angle and you're like, wow, his body is just so big. Like what, what is going on here? Let me just, you know, you end up pulling that in and making this way more thin. You're like, this is just way too thick back here. Like I need to need to scale this in. All right, that's making more sense. And then you go into perspective and you're like, whoa, that got way skinnier than it needed to. What what happened here? And I would say, I'd say just trying to make up for that can cause a little, a little bit of a problem. And it all depends on what you're sculpting as well. But there's our great princey. Here's our great doggo that we just started. Everything starts off looking like a big old, big old turd. That's okay. We will, we will get to a cute doggy eventually. What I'm trying to think about right now is how much of uh, this stylization do we want to get in here? Ah, oh, man, this pen. I want to see if I can fix my pen really quick. Through the way that... The way that I learned online. Which is to take out your pen nib. And... Slam your pen around. To recalibrate the sensor in it. It might be that this button just gets stuck down, I don't know. What I read on a forum was to drop it up from like three feet and then uh, it should start working again, which is the best advice I've ever been given. 
Wah. And uh, it actually worked the first time I did it, but it seems like it's really kind of just completely fudged right now, so. Bug. Bug bug. Alright. We'll deal. We'll deal with it. At least we'll try. Alright, let's see here. From the profile, some of the plane changes that are happening. A little bit more of a crest on the top of his head and then flowing back down. Just looking at the volume changes here from underneath. Getting a little bit too much volume coming down on this side. We'll try to round that neck back out a little bit more. And then, let's see here. Let's go ahead and split our mouth off and open up the, the mouth a little bit and try to get some of this stuff around, around here. I think we want to make our face a little bit taller. Let me see something real quick here. Kind of figure out where these eyes are really quick. And... Yeah. So we're gonna take... Oh my gosh, so... Uh, pen! So I want more of a uh, gradual flow between the sides of the jowl there going into the face and then wrapping around through here. So I'm gonna try to get that to happen a little bit more. And again, not too worried about how rough we get at this stage. More about just trying to uh, figure out these major plane changes. Am I going to make fur? Uh, pr probably, yeah, probably in some sense. Do some general fur sculpting. Let me insert a quick eye ball. A ball of eyes. We'll just append a... Uh, not that. Append a point sphere. And scale that down. And whenever I do an eye or I'm inserting something that's going to be mirrored across the X symmetry plane, I typically put it on the left side if I can, just because uh, mirror and weld works from the positive to the negative axis and the left side is your, your positive axis. So a mirror and weld will work on that side, whereas on this side, a mirror and weld will say, no, uh, this results in uh, a 3D object containing no polygons. So, operation canceled. That is not what we want. All right, so I want to move our eyes back as well as from here. Move our eyes back. And just begin figuring out where we want these. And again, I like to use the pinch brush a lot to figure out some plane changes. I think it's really good for blocking out kind of almost in a hard surface kind of, kind of style to figure out where these changes need to occur. Let's see. 
So right now, I need this to flow a little bit more smoothly into the side of the face. So I'm just trying to get some more volume up here through the uh, kind of bridge of the nose area. I don't know if dogs necessarily have a bridge of their nose, but... And I, I'm probably going to hold off on going into stylization too much at this stage, but essentially the main things that I'm thinking about are making the eyes a lot larger. It's got, you know, dogs have pretty small eyes. And probably exaggerating some stuff that I'm seeing in the silhouette. Other than that, um, I don't know. That's kind of what I'm thinking we'll do for now, though. Because I still want it to look like him. Alright, we are going to use this to just open up the mouth really quick. Very rough. And just use this to create some quick geometry. Got some holes in our mesh back here. Awesome. Let's kind of inflate these really quick. Get rid of those. I don't want any floaters or any of that nasty geometry. Just because it gets in the way if I'm going to remesh or do anything else. makes it harder to work with. And this will make it easier to do stuff like a tongue and just start working on this separation between the upper and lower portion of the mouth. I do this on my human characters as well. If you've seen it. if you've seen me sculpt anything, I pretty much always split the mouth in some respect. perspective back on and start figuring out how to make this a little bit taller. I have to hold my pen so awkwardly right now. Normally I like choke in on my uh, pen really tight but right now I have to like get way out here and hold it like this so I can press that back button. Very, very awkward. I think for um, a lot of people that uh, work with a, work with actual graphite with pencils, like multiple pencils, a lot of the time I see them holding their pen way back here, uh, almost like a paintbrush. It's very interesting. I've never tried um, never tried doing any sketching like that before, but I mean, a lot. I've seen a lot of people do it, so I think there's probably. Some kind of some kind of benefit going on there, but with uh, a graphics tablet, it doesn't exactly matter. <laughs> All you need is that that pressure, that pressure sensitivity. As long as you get that, it doesn't really matter how you hold it. Um, let's see. Quick Draw said that they are sculpting a human head, and from their understanding. It would make more sense to use Lightbox with reference and perspective to get the best results. Um, you absolutely can do that uh, if that's something you want to do. Uh, I don't know what you mean by Lightbox. You might you might be talking about Spotlight, the Spotlight tool. Lightbox um, is just like your your folders of your ZBrush installation. That's all that Lightbox is. Or maybe you're talking about shadow box, uh, which is something that nobody uses anymore. Is this what you're talking about, shadow box? I would not recommend using shadow box. Uh, you were using the grid before, and everything was getting elongated. Yeah, um, you know, if you're 
what did you say before? Uh, you're trying to do a likeness sculpt. So if you're trying to do a likeness sculpt, I would recommend not using reference planes too much. I guess it depends on what your goals are. If your goals are to improve as a sculptor, as an artist in general, I think you should try to rely on your own eye a little bit more. Uh, just because that's going to train your your ability to see form and you know replicate that form in your sculpt, um, and that's what I like to do a lot. Just because it's a lot harder and it requires you know, like I said, that artistic eye, and it takes like three clicks for me to rotate a model now instead of one. <laughs> um, I guess it depends on what your goals are, right? Three. Hey Matthew, what's going on? And thank you for the raid there. I appreciate it, Matthew. How are you doing? Uh, it depends what your goals are. I like. I again, I like using that reference because it, you know, works my artistic eye and it makes it uh, a little bit, a little bit more difficult on me, and it gets me better at recognizing these forms. If you're just trying to get a likeness out the door as quick as you can, I think reference planes are a great way to great way to go. Make sure that your um, you know your reference images though they could have different perspective. And they could have different perspective on on each camera lens, like depending on where you're getting your references from and what you're working on. If you took pictures of yourself with your own phone or something or your own camera, then they're all going to be the same exact perspective. But if you took these images off the internet, uh, you're going to run into a situation where, you know, these images were taken by a lot of different cameras, and those cameras could have different focal lengths, and that could really start to screw with your head. <laughs> if you're you're like, why some of this stuff just looks different? The person could be older in another image, or you know, it could be lighting that's screwing with you. There, there's a lot of things that can really, um, really mess with your head. But uh, try to figure out what's going on there, and uh, yeah, let me know. Let me know what you end up deciding on. Uh, Zofo says, what does the dynamic link right next to the draw size slider do? Uh, the dynamic button, uh, I, I'm trying to remember what it does on draw size. If I remember correctly, give me a second here. Please go down. Uh, oh yes, I do know, actually. So this has changed since uh, since the 4R8 version, I believe, is when it changed. Uh, but the way that dynamic works is you have to hold the control button to click dynamic now, or maybe, maybe they changed it. I thought it was control. Maybe it's shift or something, control alt. No, that's hotkey. I actually don't remember how to uh, click this button, but essentially what dynamic does is, uh, do you see how big my pen is right now? That red circle, it's a size 113. If I zoom in now, it will stay that same size on my model. If I had dynamic unchecked, it makes your, your draw size the same size no matter where you are zoomed in. So if I made my red circle the size of my my window here, my document, and then I zoomed in really far, it would still be the size of my document. Uh, dynamic keeps it scaled to the size of your model. I'm not sure why I can't click this. Is it? Maybe I can do it in here. I don't use it very often. That's why I keep it off. Yeah, I don't I don't remember how to actually click that button. <laughs> it's not working for me right now. Maybe you have to double click it. I don't remember. Uh, it used to be that you had to control click it, but I know that they changed that as well. It is double click? Okay, Zofo is saying double click. It is double click now, yes. So, very, very annoying. Uh, so, look here. I'll make this the size of my screen, about, about the size of my my ZBrush window. Zoom in, it's still the size of my ZBrush window. If I make it really small and zoom in, it stays the size of the ZBrush window. Double click again. 
no matter what, it's always the size of my model. So I'll make it really small, zoom out, still stays the same size. I prefer uh, keeping my brush size scaled to my model because I'm working on the model. I'm not working on the, the document. Some people like the ability to zoom in and out to uh, like quickly change their brush size. I, uh, I just prefer doing it this way. It's just easier for me. All comes down to preference. What works best for you? Yeah, so it's double click now, apparently. It used to be control click, if anybody remembers that. Like I said, not something I even mess with anymore. Uh, Quick Draw says that the reference is from a fellow streamer through their webcam. Uh, <laughs> so probably not the best images, right? Uh, literally grab them from their broadcast. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you can ask them for some some images without sounding too creepy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, uh, that's that's tough because you're especially gonna get some some low res images there. That's for sure. And probably not very many views that are gonna help you out. Maybe try someone a little bit more famous that has a lot of images online. I, uh, you know, I don't know how experienced you are in digital sculpting, uh, but maybe something a little bit easier might might be uh, might be better. Sounds like a toughie. Mouth is definitely, definitely too wide. That's okay. Not hard to narrow this guy out. Narrow this puppy. You're making a bobblehead of this person, of them. Oh, fun. I have never sculpted a bobblehead. But yeah, I you know, if I were you, I would recommend just going off your artistic eye. If you got some really crappy references and you don't have anything better to work off of. And uh, you know, I think that'll not only you'll end up with a really cool sculpt at the end, but you'll improve quite a lot from projects like that. I always try to have something that I'm working on uh, for each project that I do. So like with our dragon sculpt, I hadn't done anything that was a creature in a long time. Uh, I'm talking about uh, this guy here. So I hadn't done any creatures in a while, so this was pretty fun to, to sculpt. I had a lot of fun on that. And we even made it into something that we could 3D print and display. So that was a lot of fun. But yeah, I tried to, you know, I would say, if you're, you're trying to improve and get better as an artist, try to have those little little goals for each project. It can be nice. Alright, this is V-Rough, but we'll continue on here. Still in those early stages of figuring this stuff out, and I'm struggling to work with my pen. Hopefully I'll get used to it more as we go on here with time feeling very uh, awkward and blocky trying to get that nose out a little bit more so I can put an actual nose on there pull back here a little bit face is definitely too thin in general and there's a lot of proportional things that we want to play with here I'm mainly just focusing on some of these larger shapes in the face. 
We'll take a look at the ears in a moment. He is looking down a little bit right now, so I think the ears will actually sit a little bit lower than what we're seeing. Here, let's pull these up. Get a little stretch. And I'm gonna try just very roughly. Yeah, that works. Just kind of rotating those into the head. And we'll work on that flow later. We'll probably merge those into the head. And typically on stuff like this, if it's close to the like other parts of the geometry, I'll rotate it out or, or do something to um, keep it from merging down here and then I'll merge it in and then you know work on that transition and then rotate it back just so you don't end up with geometry like this all merging together through this area that's that's always really frustrating and I see that as a common issue typically on like fingers and toes and people struggling to figure out those areas for Dynamesh what I recommend um, is spreading out your fingers or if you're in uh, maybe like a little bit more of a relaxed pose for your hand, if you sculpt them like this, you're gonna, or like straight out, you're gonna run into a lot of problems with where those are touching, and it's just hard to uh, get in there and sculpt anything at all. Very frustrating to work with. All right, let's get the silhouette more so in our ears. And just give a little bit more volume for our puppy doge. And again, you know, I'm just being rough here, clay tubes brush, quick strokes, not too worried about, you know, messing anything up at this stage. There's not too much to mess up. Mainly trying to figure this stuff out. This is more so the fur, just the way the light is hitting this and how dark his fur is. I'm gonna put a little bit of this, this kind of plane change through here. Get a little bit of that negative wrap there. Uh, I'm a hard surface artist and this has been a struggle, but I appreciate all the tips. Absolutely, yeah. You know, uh, if you're, you, you know, if you're more into uh, like box modeling or poly modeling, hard surface stuff, sculpting is, you know, it's completely different. Uh, there's a lot of information I think that's transferable a lot more than if you were going from painting to sculpting, uh, just because your experience with poly modeling is going to help you out a lot in uh, in 3D modeling in general. But you know they are completely different, so don't don't beat yourself up. You know it's it's hard. It's hard to transition between those two. Uh, do you usually use Keyshot to render your sculpts? Uh, yes, yes I do. If I am not using Keyshot, uh, you know I'm perfectly comfortable just doing some quick little renders in ZBrush or something like that. I uh, I always say if or pretty much. Like, no amount of rendering or, you know, materials or textures or, like, any kind of special effects or anything post-processing that you do is going to help a crappy sculpt. So, you know, if it doesn't look good in the screenshot or just, like, in the ZBrush window here, it's probably not going to look super great in the render. So, I, uh, I like to get to a point where I'm comfortable sharing my work, uh even if it's, you know, just a screenshot. I don't mind just sharing screenshots. 
I uh, I actually enjoy just some nice little little screenshots of of people's work, you know? No no rendering, no special effects, no even like just a black and white material, like the basic material or something like that. I I enjoy that stuff. I I am not a fan of seeing stuff that's like heavily post-processed, and it's very obvious, and uh, everybody's like, yeah, this is great. It's like, mm. 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 <laughs> uh, What is going on, Hip Hop Bebop? Welcome back to the stream, and welcome, Craig. What's going on, guys? Welcome back. I just lost my image, sorry. How are you guys doing? Uh, for all those Americanos out there, how was your Thanksgiving? Hope you guys had a great holiday. All right. We're gonna start thinning out our face a little bit more now from our front view. And I, to line that up, I'm gonna rotate in my ears a little bit. And I don't have sub divs, so what I'm going to do is just Z remesh my face at about, you know, 5K, because I want it to retain some of the information around the eyes. We'll see what 5K does. I just need something more low poly that's going to be easier to make a uh, a large form change at once. So I'll be masking off this entire area here, softening that mask with some control clicks, and just pulling in on my uh, my entire face there. And I definitely do want to stylize this, but I want to find more of the character before I do that. I don't want to do too much of that at the same time. Didn't do a very good job of hollowing out this, this mouth here. Put a quick little tongue in here just so we have that and we have something to reference against some more of the face. Typically for a tongue, I'll just do a quick insert sphere, nothing crazy, and then just squash it down and pull it out. Squash it down, pull it out. My mask brush broke. Okay, cool, cool. Everything's breaking today. Everything has been breaking. Voila, a very quick tongue. All it takes. And I'm just using my move brush to uh, push and pull stuff around and figure out where some things need to go. some more volume in some of these areas. Wrapping around here. Looking at that derpy smile he's got on his face right now. Kind of ex 
exaggerate that a little bit. Ooh. Uh, Jose, Jose J. Pastor, welcome to the stream and thank you for the follow. Uh, three pounds fatter, <laughs> says Quick Draw. We're asking how the Thanksgiving went. Three pounds fatter, very nice. what Thanksgiving's all about. Storing up for the winter. We get it all done in one day here in America. Instead of storing it in our mouth cheeks, we store it in our butt cheeks. Kind of like a squirrel, but we store it as fat. <laughs> And then on January 1st, everybody buys a gym membership and uses it for a month. Trying to figure out our face a little bit during this stage. I mean, that's that's what this whole thing is, right? Trying to figure out some shapes. Trying to get this. Um, this line, this kind of like cheek, cheekbone, zygomatic bone kind of deal. Coming down this way. Tapering down into the face. Then coming back here as we rotate back this direction. Starts to get a little bit wider. It's an interesting, interesting shape. Just trying to. I think it's more floof than actual skin. I have a picture of our puppy dog here. I thought I had a picture of him wet, or maybe I didn't download that one. But yeah, he's a cutie. Yeah, I'm gonna use this image actually. This one will be a little bit more helpful in figuring out that, that line here that I'm talking about. Kind of like a, uh, a little bit of a zygo, zygomatic bone. Not quite. I'd have to look at a dog's uh, skull to figure that out. But like I said, <laughs> more floof here than anything else. Uh, the reference is my sister's dog. This is my sister's golden retriever, Weston. He's just got so much skin going on. He's a plump boy. He's he's not fat. He's just he literally he could fit two dogs inside of this dog. He's got so much extra skin. You can like grab it and yank it up. He just it's like a uh, Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> Mr. Elastic. I think we could narrow out the head and pull the eyes closer together. Definitely has 
A lot steeper of an angle here to his brow. And we probably gave a little bit too much uh, too much volume back here, I think. So I'll most likely be terminating this at the collar, like I said. I would like to maybe make this into an ornament or something. A Christmas ornament. And probably put the put a hook on top of his head. Because if I put it on the collar, then how do I do this? I thought it was control. Anyway, if I put it on the collar, it would be hanging down like this. The weight, the weight would cause it to lean forward quite a bit if we were to go that route. And I don't want that. Uh, what are the brushes that you use the most? All down here. All down here on this bottom layer. They should all be visible. Mainly the first four or five. And then some of these I use a little bit more often than others. But all those guys. And again, you'll, you're gonna see me jump up and down through these subdivs pretty quick. If I'm doing like a any kind of large scale change, any kind of big move or a pinch like what I just did, I'll drop down to a lower subdiv to do that kind of stuff it's because it's easier to move fewer polys at once that way, and uh, all that all that information that I change cascades up through the subdivs. Wessie here needs a, a schnoz. I need to give him a nose. So, <laughs> I don't, I can't remember if it was Weston or her other dog. Uh, but my mom was, was pup sitting for my sister and brother-in-law. And, uh, <laughs> he had really long eyelashes, or uh, not eyelashes, eyebrows, uh, which are the, uh, and whiskers on his mouth. So she trimmed them really short and they never grew back. So now he just has, yeah, it looks like his whiskers aren't that long, but his eyebrows are, are a lot shorter than they used to be. It's just funny. Give him a, give him a quick trim. So for the nose, I will do uh, an insert sphere, much like what we did with the tongue. And we'll give him a clown nose now. We'll start by just positioning our sphere. And I'll turn off perspective. It'll be a little bit easier. And uh, we'll just start shaping this up. So just a move brush right now. Pretty much everything. Move brush, the most important brush, used more than anything else. Definitely need to get this more flat against against that. Let's try that. And begin shaping this up. So again, using that move brush right now for the actual shape, nostrils and everything else, I'll probably use like a damn standard or something, any any kind of brush to like push in along that area. But let's make sure we got these major shapes correct first. A little trim here and there.
I'm gonna use a mask to flatten this up top. And my move brush to like pull down on the sides here. And this is gonna like fade into the skin or the uh, skin slash fur. So I'll have to think about how that's gonna transition as well. Uh, when are you gonna use Dynamesh? I've been using Dynamesh this entire time. Uh, I just recently did a couple quick remeshes on this just using Z Remesher. But yes, all this just started out as a Dynamesh sphere. That's one of the questions I get asked more or most frequently. You know, probably top uh, top three. Which what to use and when to use it. And the simple answer is I switch back and forth between them whenever I need either. So typically, you know, start with Dynamesh, hop into Z Remesh for a little bit if I need subdivs, and hop back to Dynamesh if I need something to change the form. Drastically. Or polygons are getting like really pinched if I'm using the pinch brush a lot. I'll Dynamesh something like that. Really having trouble rotating right now with this pen. I will get used to it. I must. And let's try a mask pen brush. Actually, let's zoom out here for a second. Probably, let's pull that out a little bit. Let's give a little bit more room around here. Let me, um, do a quick pinch through here. Come on. Come on, rotate for me, please. All right. Let's fix up some of this area really quick. Uh, Kavikum says a few days ago, uh, I watched uh, your YouTube channel and you critic you can criticize our sculpts. Uh, quite interested because I wanted to train more how to make hair. Uh, yes. So on Saturdays, what I am uh, now doing, as long as we have enough, I've already received uh, one here recently. But if you would like to get your sculpt uh, critiqued live on my stream, you can send that over to me at folygon at gmail.com. Include your Z tool file, so tool save as, do not send me a ZBrush project, so Z tool only. Include your Twitch name, so I know who you are. And just include some information about the sculpt, why you're making it, and why you want me to critique it, and um, you know, specifically what you want me to critique. The more specific you are, the more I will uh, be able to help you out. So those three things. Send me that and uh, I will I will critique your work here live on stream. I also uh, offer one-on-one -on -one mentorships over on my Gumroad. It's gumroad.com slash Folygon. I do still have some slots open for this month. So there is a link down below if you guys want to check that out. It's an hour session, one-on-one. -on -one. We can look at your work. Uh, a lot of the people that I typically do those do those mentorships with have a, a specific Z tool file that they want me to look at for that entire hour. And we'll go over through the whole thing, 
go through kind of a little bit of a critique, but mainly talk about tools, techniques, and uh, go through that process and end that that entire hour with the uh, with a little bit of a plan for how they can move forward. And then with that, you know, I, I record the video, of course, uh, give you the video, and I give you the updated Z tool that I have uh, worked on for that hour long time. So definitely check that out if that sounds like something that you would be interested in. Um, it's over on my Gumroad, gumroad.com slash Foligon. And I would appreciate you guys even just checking it out. And if you're not interested in buying something at uh, out of there, I always appreciate some shares. I don't pay anything to advertise, so it's just the the generous link sharing of you beautiful people that get the word out. What's going on here? What is going on? We got too much volume, that's what's going on. I'm trying to figure out how this needs to wrap a little bit better. And we're getting to a point where I have a lot of pinched geometry in here. Somebody was just asking, who was it? Uh, Stang. Stang was just asking, when do you use Dynamesh? Uh, we're getting to a point where we're about to Dynamesh this, just because it's getting so, so pinched in some of these areas. But again, I'm still gonna keep it really rough. So we'll continue on here. What I wanted to do was just adjust that form slightly so I could come in on the nose and start figuring out these these nostrils a little bit more here. Let's see. Whoops, we accidentally softened that mask. Definitely not something we want. Um, I think our nose is a little bit too wide. Definitely want a thinner bridge between here. So we'll probably, probably do that all at once here. These shapes are always, these kind of curly Q shapes are always fun to do. And by fun, I mean difficult. <laughs> kind of a, kind of a tough thing to get right. So actually what I'm gonna do, hmm, let's try this. Let's try creating a polygroup with control W, then using, did not mean to subdivide that, then using um, group loops. Try to get a little bit of a cleaner selection here. I think that's all right. We can work with that. Push that in. And I know it's rough, the, the major shape there is rough, but we've gotten a nice kind of clean in, uh, clean pull in between this entire area, which is good. Let's see here. Let's do a quick Trying to get a decent poly count out of this. All right, so I've done a uh, relatively quick dynamesh there in an attempt to start shaping this up a little bit more. Through here, I'm just mm, gonna dynamesh this, but let me mess with this shape for a little bit longer. I need to get a negative cavity in here as well, don't I? I like using the mask lasso a lot, but for some of these areas, if you have geometry on the other side of the object, if you're trying to make a marquee selection, it's just gonna cut through to the other side. Sometimes it's just faster to use that mask pen. I like to start with the mask lasso a lot though.
And there's a little bit of a negative clay tube stroke in there. Start pushing that form up, getting that geometry out of the way. And now I can start working on how thick this edge is gonna be and how this is gonna transition a little bit more into that outside, uh, this outer lip here. So I was trying to get some more volume here, but it's causing some problems in that area. And try to fix that a little bit. Definitely still, uh, still keeping this pretty rough. But I can see him starting to starting to shine through at least a little bit at this stage. Uh, can uh, where can we get the IMM brush that you use for eyelids? Uh, was it the Cube brush? Uh, yes, it is the Cube Tube brush. Um, it is right here uh, under my curve brushes. Uh, so gumroad.com slash Folygon, and then just my curve brushes. Um, there's a link somewhere below for this. And it comes with four brushes, uh, four different curve brushes that you can get all for one doll hair, uh, which does include that, that cube tube brush that I use for eyelids. There were too many people asking for that brush, so I said, fine, take it. Taketh this burden from me. No problem, dude. Yeah, of course. A horse, of course. Why? Profile definitely needs some work. I don't have a very good profile pick of this guy, though. This cute pupper. adjust how that's transitioning there. I don't want to affect the <coughs> excuse me, the eye socket area too much there. Let's see. Dark Venom, welcome to the stream. Dark Venom asks uh, what kind of tablet do you recommend for sculpting? Uh, if you're brand new and you don't have a graphics tablet, I highly recommend the uh, Wacom Bamboo tablets. You can get them for under $100, and they work uh, just as well as uh, uh, some of the higher-end tablets. Uh, and they still have the Wacom drivers, so they are, uh, you know, you're not going to have a lot of trouble setting it up. It's just going to kind of work out of the box. You obviously have to uh, get the update for them for the newest driver uh, But yeah, that's what I recommend uh, But if you got a little bit more cash to spend a little bit more cash to blow I recommend uh, grabbing one of the Intuos tablets uh, Specifically, you know go for it. I recommend going for the medium the uh, the large is is way way bigger than you would ever need and the small is just a little bit too small the medium is just right. It's the uh, Goldilocks of of uh, the Intuos tablets. So that's what I uh, would recommend for a first time tablet goer. Tablet goer. I'm gonna pretend I didn't say that. 
Uh, can sculpt okay with a mouse, but do want to get a more comfortable setup for sculpting. Uh, I don't know anybody that can sculpt with a mouse, so props to you. <laughs> sounds, uh, sounds like a rough going sculpting with a mouse. Doesn't sound very fun. Is this a separate polygroup? It is! Beautiful! Let's use Z Remesh. Keep groups. Target poly count 1k. Boom. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, no problem. No! A mouse does not have pressure sensitivity. Uh, but if anybody knows of a mouse with pressure sensitivity, <laughs> please link me to it. I would love to see what that looks like. <laughs> I can only imagine. That would be hilarious. That, uh, that zero mesh was kind of kind of terrible. Stop. Stop giving me a star there. What is this? What is this Garbo? I must trick. I must trick you, ZBrush, into doing what I want. It's the only way. Uh, people are absolutely, absolutely allowed to share their work in chat. Feel free to share links to your art stations or, you know, whatever. If you or uh, just like an imager link, Im imager. Nailed it. <laughs> Go ham, but don't spam. Uh, I just want his, I just want my mouse click to work. Whoa! Did my? Okay. Wait a second. Oh my god! This pen. <laughs> Speaking of pressure sensitivity, my uh, my pen pressure just completely went out on me not working right now. Okay, that's not what I want. I'm actually going to update the driver uh, back to... No, no, stop, stop, stop. No, I'm not. <clears throat> because then it will, it will break my pen and uh, I would have to restart my computer. I will update the driver again later. Restore, please. Don't know where this is. Where are you? Oh, pen. Welcome, pen. Why? Why must you be so fickle? Aksu, thank you for the follow there. I appreciate it. How are you doing? I'm trying to fix my pen real quick. Do a quick save and close the ZBrush real fast. Make sure this is working. Sometimes when you alt tab from ZBrush, you lose pressure sensitivity. Uh, I think that used to be kind of like an older problem. I don't think I've had that happen 
in the last like few years probably. Let me open that boy back up. We got a lot of recovered files in here that we need to delete, don't we? Please work. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Oh my god. What? What? Why? What are you doing? All this is... Okay, cool. Cool. Cool, cool. Everything's great. Everything is fine. Okay. Holy crap. That was a process. Uh, I need a new pen. <laughs> I just can't use that front button at all now, which makes me sad. Let's re-import our puppy dog. I will actually, I'll import a different image this time so we can get a little bit of a different, this is the one that I've been looking at off screen for a little bit. There we go. Let's see. Uh, I want to. Sh I think I want to share my sculpt from my art station, but it's only one sculpt based on fan art. Well, it's uh, it's totally up to you. I uh, I say the more the merrier. And remember, uh, again, if you would like to get your work critiqued here live on stream, we are doing that on Saturdays. So if you want to send your stuff in, I'll take a look. And we can critique it live here on stream. Just send me your, your Twitch username, your Z tool, and what you want me to look at for your file. And we'll go from there. That's follygon at gmail.com, by the way. Right, I've made that mouth a little bit more thick uh, than it needs to be through there. That'll just help a little bit later with some of this stuff. Need to reset up my stuff. It's always annoying when you have to go out of ZBrush and reset some of your brushes. A lot of that stuff you can't save, unfortunately. The nose is very, like, kind of hard surfacey right now, but we will take care of that. I was just about to work on this right when my pen pressure stopped working completely, which is always just the, the bee's knees, the, the the pits, or is the pits, or is the pits a bad one? I think the pits is a bad one. I don't know. Using some move back face masking. Fix some of that. Let's 
Trying to adjust the shape here. And I will do... Pen chain, let's see. Always jealous of people that can draw. <laughs> well, there's still time. Still plenty of time. Actually, instead of that, we're going to shorten this schnoz quite a bit. Some more volume in here, and by shorten the nose, I mean back here. The uh, the depth is just a little extreme. Trying to carry that volume back through the the wings of the nose there. That's what I'm doing here, and then let's see. I'm going to terminate this a little bit earlier. Oops. Towards the bottom. Just a little bit of a pull in, I think. And I don't want it terminating in this really sharp point here. Maybe like a little, but definitely more rounded. A lot of that has to do with um, the, the shape of our mouth here. So we'll try move back face masking. Feel discouraged looking at amazing artists on ArtStation. Well, that's no good. I definitely know the feeling, though. You know, everybody has to start somewhere. When you have that huge gap in front of you. It's definitely, uh, definitely rough going. But, you know, everybody else that has made it to that point and continues to grow has, has been exactly where you are today. And I think that alone is incredibly humbling and encouraging to to kind of continue pushing forward just in our last stream I think before before we had all the problems with our pen um, I was showing off you know a lot of my old work where I started and I think it's uh it's nice to see some of that sometimes so if you're interested in seeing some of my old trash can trash can work swirling down a toilet uh, you can go to my YouTube channel and check out our last stream where we were looking at some of that stuff. I think it's the video where I was doing a, uh, a live q and I believe it was. It is. Here. You know what? I will find it really quick. Live Q&A. Hello, everybody. Shush. Shush me. I will paste that in chat real quick here. Uh, let's see, let me close that really quick because I always click that on accident. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything here in chat. I had my chat closed for a moment. Uh, <laughs> kind of lazy when you want to start drawing. Uh, only want to draw when I see my friends or other people post some cool artwork. <laughs> well, it sounds like maybe you don't want to draw too much, well, that's, which is fine, you know? I always say people will always do exactly what they want at the end of the day. So, sounds like maybe you don't want to draw all that much. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> right now, you want to improve your sculpting after watching after wa watching my YouTube channel. Well, thank you. And like I said, definitely check out that Q and A video. I go through and look at you know a lot of my old work and talk about it some and just. Like I said, everybody goes through that period where, you know, you start out, start out at nothing. And I think it's nice to uh, be reminded of that. I did not start off doing what I'm doing right now. Everyone sees the end result and very few see the work that goes in. That's actually why I love like old marble sculpture. Just because I know that it's literally years of people's lives years and years, not just put into that one piece alone, which which there very often was, years and years of people's lives put into into those works, but um, you know, the years before and training and, and getting up to a point where they could do something of that caliber. But uh, we we're talking about uh, the David, the statue of David in uh, Florence, Italy, because I got to see it in person which was amazing. And uh, man, I just couldn't stop staring at it. Not because of his his big donger hanging out, which it is. Actually, it's pretty tiny, <laughs> if I remember correctly. But uh, just, just seeing that and understanding how much work goes into something like that, it's, like I said, it's very humbling. And it's, it's cool, you know, people have been doing this kind of stuff for uh, for centuries, for, for millennia, millennium, millennia, you know, working towards uh, a skill or some kind of large, large goal, and it's hard to see that that light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes it really is. I don't know. It's kind of kind of fun knowing. You know, like I said, everybody starts at the same place. I like that thought at least. I'm trying to get some more volume here without destroying the rest of this. Which is proving difficult. He still needs a lot of work from the profile. He really starts to fall apart as I rotate around. Let me pull that image up again. Where'd that go? Let's see. Wyvern Jack, what's going on? Uh, was was what better than the dog? I'm not sure what you're, what you are talking about. Let's see. Uh, the David, was the David, was it better than the dog in, in the reference? Well, he's definitely more, uh, Weston here is definitely more cute than the David. But uh, the sculpture is uh, it's fantastic. There are, there's a reason why it's revered so highly. I feel like I could push this further back here. Try to get a little bit more of that smile. I meant to turn on AccuCurve. I guess I didn't click it. Okay, whatever. So we're starting, you know, we've been getting into secondary forms here for quite a while, but that doesn't mean that I stop looking at and thinking about these primary larger shapes here in our silhouette. I'm still thinking about all this as we go. 
And what's nice in ZBrush is that you have that ability to, you know, I can step down to a really low subdivision level and start tweaking some stuff here in the profile a little bit more if I need to, which I definitely do. Let's continue here. Might have exaggerated some of that a little bit too much. And I think we could get some more depth here on our eyes. More depth, kind of pulling back a little bit more and a little bit more, a little bit more volume around here for this lid. I'm probably going to do the lids as a separate mesh like I do with my human characters because it's a little bit easier to manipulate that stuff but at least uh, initially here I want to sculpt in some of this form. You know, maybe we'll just do this the whole way through, I don't know. Depends what's easier. Uh, biggest Star, thank you for the follow and welcome to the stream, how are you doing? We'll probably push these eyes back into his head a little bit more as well. They're kind of bulging out, aren't they? And David or the doggy. Choose now. Julie, what's going on? Welcome back. I believe I saw you last on the Pixelogic channel, if I remember correctly. How are you doing? So, can you guys see how much this is pinching around here now? Getting really, really pinched. So we're getting to a point where if I want to continue working in this, in this area, I would probably Dynamesh this just to get rid of all this uh, polygonal stretching. But I can at least um, kind of clean up some of this. Get that volume. Continuing down through there. And get that lid going more the correct direction here. I'll probably pinch this as well. Uh. Is that how Egypt got their gods? Probably. <laughs> it's one o'clock in the morning and you have to wake up at six to go to work, but I still wanna watch this. Well, hey, you know what? I say, uh, I, if I were you, I would go to sleep. I would go get some rest. Uh, I appreciate you wanting to stay and hang out, but you know. Like I said, you gotta get that booty sleep. Your health is more important. Uh, plus, you know, you guys can always catch the streams over on my YouTube channel. After I stream, they go up online after that, so. Not a big deal if you miss something. I demand, I demand that every man, woman, and child watching this stream you may not leave. I hold you here captive. <laughs> no sleeping, no eating, no bathroom breaks. Get You can very quickly go get a bucket. That's all I will allow. <laughs> you may not leave, ever. Yeah, I don't know how I'm feeling about this eyelid technique now. I just got here and now I'm trapped. Yes. Go ahead, try to click away. I have I have hacked I have hacked your internets. You cannot click away. Watch this. You're using Google Chrome, aren't you? It's because I hacked you, I know. 
If you're not using Google Chrome, what are you doing? Go download Google Chrome. <laughs> Don't you want uh, Google Chrome to hog all your resources? Come on. What? Why is that brush there? This is not what this should be. You know what? This happened to me earlier. My UI got messed up. This should be my sharp soft brush. Let me fix my UI really quick here. Make sure all these are right. Same in clay tubes. Z modeler, that's all correct. I don't know how this happened, but this happened to me the other day. Let me fix this really quick. Fun fact, if you have multiple palettes in one of your sidebars, uh, you have to reverse the order of them for them to save correctly. So I have the stroke palette on top right now. But watch what happens when I go to save UI. Let me save this out. This is, I don't know why it does this, but it's really annoying. So you gotta save it, but then also another thing you gotta do is make sure you toggle off Lightbox. And then let me do a store config, okay. And then again, turn off Lightbox. And also you wanna close these sub palettes when you do this because it will remember that you had them open if you um, save your config, which is also very annoying. But yes, so Stroke and Z Plugin are flipped right now, but I will restart ZBrush. Again, very strange bug. I don't know why this happens, but I have to do this every time. It's very annoying. Go to sleep, otherwise you will be dog tired. Har 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 har. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. You're hilarious. Okay, look. See, strokes on the bottom now. Why? Why do this? Why do, ZBrush? Why you do? Why you do this? Where's my quick save? I haven't even saved this yet. I've just been doing quick saves. All right, we will fix the puppy's eyes now after I re-import my image. That is twice now that I've had to restart ZBrush because of stupid little, stupid little bugs. I will re-import this image because this one was very helpful. So cute. Yeah, let me turn up the opacity and again, We'll just flip through these so you guys can see. I, I don't know if I'm gonna go this heavily stylized with the Disney style. Uh, I'm kind of, um, kind of thinking about that in the back of my head right now. We'll figure it out as we get closer. But again, this is my sister's puppy. He's very cute, golden retriever. Um, field, a field retriever, I think. I think those are like the more red ones. Uh, but yes, he's adorable, and he's very cool. This is how he dresses most days, with the glasses and hat. <laughs> uh, let me find that profile. Even though it's a crappy image, it's still helpful. Uh, the UI is having a stroke. <laughs> yeah. Also very good fun. Also, I think so. <laughs> this is the brush I wanted, my sharp soft brush, so I could come through here and and um, fix this edge. I'm gonna do a Dynamesh now. Decent resolution out of that, but I want to carry this edge through here. Uh, Kavikum, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Let's see, make sure I didn't miss anything here in the chat. I'll try to keep the puns on a leash, oh God. <laughs> 
doggone it. Let me run free, puns unchained. Oh god. It's out of control. I don't know when this stream became the pun, the pun zone. I need to go back in time, erase this moment from history. Or just sculpt something that's impossible to make a pun from. Like a, I don't know, giraffe, right? Nothing rhymes with giraffe. A silver giraffe. I guess it doesn't have to rhyme to be a pun, does it? All the, <laughs> at least all these puns are positive. Ha 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 ha. Impossible. <laughs> you got there first. It's my pun. Stop stealing my puns. This is the part of the stream where everyone is googling furiously. Must think of more dog puns, quick. This is very laggy right now. I'm gonna need some more volume in this area though, so that's why I'm kind of uh, kind of like pinching that out right now. Get a little bit of a, uh, a transition here between these shapes. Especially like Yeah, that's a little bit more what I'm looking for. I don't need uh I had this really exaggerated before and I think it just got a little bit too much. A little bit too out of hand. I think uh the nose is probably still too wide. Is he mouth? The schnalls in general. And again, the reason why I typically uh, do these eyelids separately, it's kind of hard to, uh, like if I want to change the directionality of this, it's really tough to do that when it's like stuck to the mesh like this, when it's all one, one piece of geometry. Kind of annoying to work with, or at least for me it is. I, I know some people that prefer working with it all as one. I think it makes it a lot more easy to split it up. We're getting away from him. We're getting away from him, but that's okay. I need to figure out some of these other shapes here while we're still in this weird area. Anything you can do, I can do better. Anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> no, you can't. Yes, I can. It's a good one. It's a good one. Isn't that from some? It's not from a Hitchcock film, is it? It's from an older. No, not Hitchcock. But it's from one of those old black and white movies. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, I thought my pen was going to break on me again. Alright, so I'm going to remesh this so that I have an easier time pushing in on the, uh, the mouth to make this a little bit more more narrow and to give us some easier uh, control over just our form in general here so let's do a z remesh at around 5k it's probably a little bit too high res but it'll be it'll be fine A pun battle to the death. I think that sounds fair. Uh, I'm not sure if I have heard that version or not. If I looked it up, maybe I'd recognize it. Throw you a bone. Har, 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 har. Nyeh, 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 nyeh. Accepting your loss will be rough. All right, come on, come on, get them all out. Let's let's hear the rest of them. What else? I think his bark is worse than his bite. It's not really a pun, but just get them all out. Let's let's hear it. I'll boop you. <laughs> boop. So my sister's other dog. Uh, <laughs> it's also a golden retriever. He can't sit. Well, he, he does not sit correctly, um, <laughs> so he uh, he always does like the splute thing with his back legs out behind him. He never sits normally. Like I don't know if he can sit normally. <laughs> it's pretty funny. He's uh, he's cute as well. Might be doing him next actually. We'll see how quickly we can get done with this one. Like I said, this uh, I would like to turn this into like a, a Christmas ornament and 3D print it. I think that would be a lot of fun. Let's see how long this takes and how well it turns out. Definitely need to go more narrow on the sides of the face here. I had a lot of this for the fur earlier, kind of out here. I think I just maybe pushed it a little bit too far, which is fine. And again, we also want to narrow our nose, our, our, our mouth. as I have re referred to this area as just incomplete. Uh, this is the schnoz from, from now on, on all animals, the schnoz. Probably want some more form down here so it's not quite as blocky and we also want to um, narrow it out quite a bit. I probably will not do teeth just because they're going to be too thin for the scale that I would print at. So we'll have to cover some stuff up or come up with something creative for that area. We'll figure it out. Maybe the mouth just won't be open. Maybe his tongue will be sticking out like the side of his mouth or something. Something derpy. <laughs> we'll think about that more once we get closer to a uh, more finished in the rest of this. Uh, Nuclear Dan, what's going on? How you doing? Yeah, 
some of these are a little too on the nose. <laughs> Dan has joined the pun battle. Yes. <laughs> Dan is punning in. Smash, Smash Bros. cutscene. <laughs> ba, ba, ba. Oh man. Got that new Smash Bros. coming. That'll be fun. I'm excited. Even though uh, I think uh, my expectations are very low based on how similar it is to Smash 4. I am a, I'm a Smash Bros. elitist. I like competitive Smash. So if we're gonna go more this direction, I think the eyes will have to be smaller. But, if we're going to go more that stylized direction, eyes are going to have to be larger. So we're probably going to make the eyes um, much larger than what they are now. I do want to get uh, a little bit more of uh, the likeness in here, which we've kind of strayed away from since we've started defining our eye a little bit more. But we'll get back to that. This rotation. I'm starting to get used to it, but still, uh, still very, very annoying. Just using this new, new kind of setup with the pen. Kind of frustrating. A blip. <laughs> Yes, I will share my friend code, and we can we can smash bros it up. Can confirm, yes, that I am a smash bros elite. <laughs> I uh, melee is just like literally one of the best games ever accidentally made. so good for so many reasons. Ah uh, yes, Luigi. Luigi's great. <laughs> it's a little, a little taunt kick. That is also a meteor. Yeah, it's pretty fun. It's good stuff. <laughs> Peach is number one, and you can actually fight me on this. This is true. All fights can be uh, um, decided, decided in Smash. It's how all uh, decisions in the world will be made. Any uh, any political change, new laws, uh, you know, who gets the last bit of ice cream, little things, big things. It's all going to be decided in Smash. So you know, the Supreme Court hearing, you know, anything, anything. It's all decided in Smash. <laughs> Choose your fighter. Let's go. Deciding the fate of the world here with Smash Bros. This seems fair to me. Better start practicing. If you want to become the next president of the United States, you know, it's a, it's a big Smash battle. You have to do an Iron Man. Who, uh, you gotta prove, uh, if you want to be the leader of the free world, you gotta prove that you can you can smash with the full roster. That's my opinion, you know. The fate of the world. This would be a great movie. <laughs> Decided by a fighting game. I'm sorry, by a party game. My bad, my bad guys. Yes, Snack. Snack is coming back. Uh, I will. Uh, I will find my fi find out what my friend code is. I don't have it offhand. I don't have my switch in here either. But I will get it and I will share it on here. And we can, uh, if other people are 
I'm gonna be playing Smash Ultimate. I'd be happy to play some games. <laughs> Hip Hop Bebop says I only I, or I still play Mario Hotel for the CDI. <laughs> nice. Uh, what about the CDI Zelda games? What about those? Aren't those uh, just beautiful pieces of art? They should be preserved in a museum. <laughs> yes. All things decided by Smash. This This seems fair. I'm into it. I think uh, our head is a little uh, a little bit too wide in general, um, but unfortunately, hmm. Let me turn off my ears for a moment here and think about this. I think probably the easiest way to do this, so just to do a large scale change like this, would be to use Transpose Master, and then. That was weird. There we go. And try to do something like this. Just try to pull in a little bit. Now I'm getting some geometry that's freaking out on that center line. That's okay, it's not that'll get fixed later. I don't need to worry about that too much. So just a large scale kind of pull in there. I think that will help. Um, let's get that a little bit closer to what I'm seeing there. T-pose that back. Really quick rough change. And that's what's nice about subdivs again. You can just do those huge changes without worrying about messing up some of your other form. A little bit easier. Now, let's look at our profile some more because we definitely want some stuff to change here, and we're gonna work on the uh, the lower jaw, the lower mouth, because we have completely neglected this for the past what hour, hour and a half. And start playing with this some more and get this to blend back in and we'll uh we'll connect all this back up. Here, I'll do this as well. Um material Toy plastic, fill object, and then RGB. Um, I'll just use. Nah, do a quick mask pen here. Most of a dog's eyeball is just iris pupil. Dog's eyes are big. So I've polygrouped this, and then with that polygroup, I can just set this very quickly to uh, to black. Just do something like that. Only did that on one side, so that's fun. I don't know why symmetry isn't on on these. Wow, okay, there we go. So the reason I've done this, woo! <laughs> Uh, is just so I can get a little bit more of a feel for uh, for scale and some other stuff here. I find it helpful to um, uh, if you're working with like poly paint or anything else. It can be nice to to get some of that information in there. So if I want this to be closer to the um, image that we're looking at for our, for our puppy Doge, I think the eyes are going to have to be much smaller, or at least our eyelids are going to have to be you know, closed quite a bit more, which is fine. We can start going that direction, but I, 
I would prefer to um, think more about stylization and how we're going to end up doing that. Uh, and when we get there, probably going to make the eyes a lot bigger, I think. What's going on, Alan? Welcome to the stream. So if we, and I'm going to be adjusting our neck and everything else down here for a little bit, but if we look at uh, 101 Dalmatians and the stylization that goes on here, you know, typically in the style of characters, eyes are, you know, a big part of the expressiveness of a character, so they're typically much larger. So if we want to go this direction, I would maybe like to go... Right now I'm like on the fence, so I'm like 50-50 in the middle of going for the total likeness and going for a more stylized version. If we go stylized, this stylized, we're gonna have to um, really start looking at form. Let's do this. Let's let's keep going on the uh, the likeness here for a little while. And once I feel like it's starting to look a little bit more like him, we will uh, we'll go into exaggeration mode and start uh, getting closer to that stylization. So that'll be our our plan moving forward here. actually figure out where we're going to put this collar. This is going to be the termination point. Again, I would like to probably just make this a, um, a hollow down here, so this will all be cut off. And if I'm going to, I, I want to make this into a Christmas ornament, essentially. So I'm going to have to have like a little hook or something on top of his head to tie a string around or, or whatever or put like a little hook on. So I'll have to figure that out. Once we get to that point, we're nowhere near there right now. We don't have to think about that too hard right now. Not really, not really necessary at this stage. But I at least want to keep that in the back of my head. It, I, I would like to put it on the collar, but what's going to end up happening is if it's holding the weight from up here, you know, it's going to swing forward because it's so off balance and, you know, going to end up being more like this, hanging that way. So that's not what we want. So probably just on top of the head. So the weight uh, can hold it upright and you can see his face. I'm here for the good boy. <laughs> he looks kind of angry. Yeah, I think it's more the uh, direction of the eyelids that are doing that. And that's why you paint in stuff like the uh, little pupil here, so you can start figuring out direction. You know, more of a uh, tilt in, it's going to give that look. Whereas if we, you know, pull that up even slightly, it already goes away from that, right? Pretty easy, pretty easy fix. But I'm, uh, I'm less worried about the expression right now and more worried about just some of these, these bigger changes. And, you know, it's easy, I think, to get caught up in... And some of this stuff you're like, oh, I need to fix this little thing over here and this little thing. I think it's good to do that, but try to focus on large, then medium, then small. So focus on fixing large things, then fix, uh, fix those medium things, and then fix those small things. Uh, if you end up fixing a bunch of small things, and then you're like, oh, I need to fix this big thing. Oh, sorry for hitting my mic there. Uh, then you're going to have to go back and fix some more small things around that same area. And that uh, that's not... That's not a good use of your time. You're gonna end up running in circles forever. So sometimes it's best to just leave some of that stuff. A spiky collar and a mohawk. <laughs> uh, have I 3D printed before? Yes, I've 3D printed uh, a ton. I have a ton of experience in 3D printing. Uh, it's a lot of my professional background. I uh, even have some SLS uh, full color sandstone prints down here on my desk. I have about like 15 of different characters down here that I've just made in the past. There's a link somewhere down below to my 3D print shop if you guys just want to look at a few more of these. But uh, there's there's a ton of these down there. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And I'm not going to take the, the time to 
pull up every single one and show them off. If you guys want to check them out there, there there's a link down below. But yes, I, uh, I've done quite a lot of 3D printing. I'm very experienced with FDM, SLA, and uh, SLS as well. A Christmas hat. Ooh. That's not a bad idea. A little Santa hat. I like that. Thank you, Julie. That's a that's a that's a very good idea. I'm into it. Uh Wyvern Jack says, would I share uh, some of my models for personal 3D printing? If yes, how much for a model? One million dollars. Uh I don't know. Depends what you want. Typically, typically no, uh, just because I'm giving away the 3D file, and then uh, you know that's like now you have that. Not that you would do anything nefarious with that, but maybe somebody else would, or you know if if that got you know in the wrong hands, or you know if I sculpt something that's fan art, and then someone starts selling it, and they're like, oh well. Folygon said I could do it. It's like, okay, that comes back to me now. <laughs> I don't necessarily need that. Um, yeah, I typically no, just because I I like to have my my stuff. But uh, I don't know. If there's something specific you want, let me know. You can whisper me or shoot me an email. Trying to fill in a lot of this. I've gotten a little, um, a little bit too tight through this area. All right, I'm gonna leave the eyes alone for a little bit because again, I think we're gonna end up scaling those up quite a bit once we start getting more into that stylization. Let's take a look at our profile here because there's a lot that we want to fix. Let me find my crappy profile image that I have. Uh, a lot to do with uh, mainly just length and some larger proportional changes here. So I'm going to go into Transpose Master just because it's easier to fix this stuff here. and just start adjusting some form. Eventually we're gonna merge this together here and that'll be a lot easier to fix after we do that. You suddenly gave me an idea to plot your downfall. Yes, fantastic. <laughs> yes, everybody everybody, join in on, on Wyvern's plan. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh no, I had, a, I had symmetry off while I did that. I don't think it messed anything up. Whenever you go into transpose, make sure you turn on symmetry before you make any of those those big changes. Forgot to do that. Real quick, let's see. I'm just start fixing some of the stuff. Please rotate. Come on. Now, unfortunately, your creases don't come through um, over to Transpose Master, which is unfortunate because I can't see what this collar would look like smoothed. It just goes to like this this shape here, which is not correct. So that's kind of annoying. Um, yeah, I'll just here. I'll just do that for now. If we want, we can also throw some quick poly paint on this, which is sometimes helpful for figuring out your your shapes. I 
and I want I'm going to leave this excess down here right now. This will go away later. I'm going to leave it for right now, though, just so I can sculpt and build this up a little bit easier. This extra floof around the collar. So I'm using my pinch brush and my clay tubes just to start building up this form. Starting to stretch pretty bad. It's all right, not a big deal. I just want to start pulling this out. Wyvern Jack, talking smack, talking smack in chat. I'm I'm still waiting for you guys to throw down in Smash Bros. Right? Isn't that how we we're we're deciding all arguments? Even though this is a completely fake argument. <laughs> Uh, have I used uh, the uh, Raise, I believe that's Raise or Rise, R Rise 3D printers before? I have not. I'm not familiar with them. I assume that they're FDM machines. I've never heard of them. I would say pretty much all FDM printers are exactly the same. There's not going to be much of a difference between them. I, I don't think you're going to run into... Um, Unless, unless you're getting something that's a little bit more pricey that's going to automatically have uh, some of those extra nice little features, stuff like auto-leveling and all that, I recommend for your first printer definitely getting something on the cheaper side so you can figure out how to do all that stuff yourself. There's definitely like a learning curve there, right? We are going to take our corner of our mouth way back here. It's way too far forward. And remember, I don't have perspective on right now. I need to make these ears a little shorter. at a different image. They look a lot shorter here. I would say maybe flush with the corners of his mouth. <laughs> Very cool. Let's see. Maybe a little bit lower. I'll just leave it there for now. And I'm going to have to figure out this lower jaw as well. We'll be doing that here in just a moment. Yes, he uh, he loves his smile. He's a, he's a cutie. It looks like he's pouting. Yeah, they they are adorable. This one. This was on his birthday. They always get birthday hats. Apparently he's wearing two here. I might have done that. I don't remember. <laughs> but yes, he's he's very cute. The other one is just as cute as well. Uh, let's see. Do I have subdivs on this tongue? No. Take a few subdivs. Let me get rid of all this extra 
geometry that we don't need. I'm going to delete this. I was showing this off as an example um, for something, I think, with perspective, I believe. But uh, if you guys are interested in watching the full process for this sculpt, it is over on my YouTube channel. It's uploaded on there. So uh, this, we actually, <clears throat> excuse me, started this sculpt the same way that we started this one. Uh, just starting with a sphere and going ham from there. But yeah, yeah, he was a lot of fun to work on. This is the Great Prince of the Forest from Bambi. Delete all, yes. That's just taking up more space whenever I get a quick save file, so that's kind of, kind of why I delete that stuff and get rid of it. Plus, it makes this a lot longer, which is annoying to work with. Uh, did he turn two, two hats, one for each year? Yes, every year he gets an additional hat. <laughs> no, uh, I don't. I don't remember how old he was there. I think he's like around five now. Uh, it turned out great. Yeah, I, I think so. It was a lot of fun to work on the uh, the Bambi Bambino. Um, let's see. <laughs> yes, you only get so many questions. That's that's the rule. And by rule, I mean the self-imposed rule <laughs> by Wyvern. <laughs> Alright, let's try figuring out this uh, transitional area down here. Because I think this will be a nice line to follow through through here and we can start being um, start start getting a little bit more into that that stylization uh, I'm not exactly sure like I said how far we'll push it but I want to uh, at least start thinking about that a little bit more And probably end up making the jaw a little bit more thin. Let's try to pull back through some of this. I know I've got these lines like really hard in here right now, but this is just to help me figure out what's going on in my uh, surface. Especially when you're trying to sculpt something that's very furry, it's or you know covered in hair or really anything that makes it hard to see what forms are going on, uh, it's really tough. And blocking a lot of this out with some harder plane changes is something I do in everything that I sculpt, but especially here, it's it's going to really help me out because there's you know it's hard to figure out um, exactly what's going on underneath all that fur. And hmm. we should probably merge these back together here shortly. Let's try making this a little bit more thin. Thin out our jowl. Hmm. Should we feel bad for distracting me? No, no. Not at all. Please, please continue the distractions. <laughs> I think I want to um, start blending these together, but actually I want to um, just see golden retriever profile. Find a little bit of a better reference image than what I have. So majestic. Aw. Puppy! 
Let's see. This one looks pretty good. I'll use these. You're helping? <laughs> I don't know about helping. Uh, right click. Open image. Okay. Let me see. <laughs> Lab plus sprinkler. Oh my god. Uh, let me see here. Hold on. Let me find something really quick. This is, so this is my sister's Instagram. This is their Halloween costume. We're just gonna look at cute dogs for a second, but you just said the sprinkler thing. Let me find this. <laughs> I don't know if they sound with this, but uh. This is, uh, this is Weston. He's the one with all the extra skin. Look at all that, look at all that extra flap. I don't think there's a way I can fast forward. There's a part where they get attacked by the sprinkler. I don't know if this is this is the one. Or I guess it is, <laughs> based on the thumbnail. There's another one, but yes, they're they're very cute. They're they're adorable. But this is this is their other dog. Look at him. He's 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 crazy. They're they're too cute. They're too cute. Uh, Weston, the one I'm sculpting right now, loves to sleep. Uh, all day. <laughs> He's a cutie. Let's find, let's find more cute, cute pics. Yeah, this is, so, <laughs> that's the, their other dog. It's Finley. It's this one. He's very cute as well. Probably be doing him next. We'll see. We'll see. Alright, so I'm going to be using this image here to figure out the profile a little bit more. Uh, so I'm going to have this up on my, my other monitor. Yes, I know. I need a dog now, too. I need a dog right this second. <laughs> Runs over to the pet store. Give me all your dogs, please. All of them. Uh, demonstrating how procrastination works. Look, that was like five seconds, okay? I'm allowed. I'm allowed, all right? That's not procrastinating. Get, get off my get off my dang quiche. This needs to be more thin. A lot more narrow. And there is just too much um too much volume, like it's it's getting too rounded under here, so I want to uh just try narrowing that even more through there. Can I do a handstand? <laughs> I can do a handstand, and no, I will not be doing it on stream. That's such a strange question. It sounds like, hey, time to get distracted again. Uh, so when I was a, uh, when I was young, I took karate lessons. When I, uh, when I was like eight or nine I think I started taking karate and I did it for like five or six years um, but one of the things that I learned in karate was to do I, I, this wasn't part of karate but it was just like a big open uh, like not tatami mats but like whatever that soft plastic I don't know what it is but uh, I would always just walk around it on my hands and um, when I was really young, you know when you're small, your strength to body weight ratio is so much, uh, so much smaller than it is when you're old and lazy and sit down all day and sculpt like I do? <laughs> so uh, I used to walk up and down my stairs on my hands. I absolutely cannot do that now, and I know I would hurt myself, but I used to do that all the time. I don't know why. I, I just really wanted to learn how to walk on my hands. I probably saw, like, the, um... I remember this video of this dude setting the the record for walking up the most amount of, uh, like, most flights of stairs at once. There's some, like, large building in New York. I don't know. I can't remember. Maybe that's, that's what inspired me. <laughs> but no, we will not be walking on our hands on stream. We're good. We solid. I, uh, 
I'm sure I make a f enough fool of myself just talking because most of the time I'm trying to focus on sculpting and I'm talking at the same time and I'll be focusing and words are just coming out of my mouth and I have no idea what I'm even saying and five minutes later I'm like, was I, what was, what was I even talking about? I, I can't even remember. That's, that's what my streams are, so. <laughs> I know, very entertaining. It's a good time, good time here. All right, we're getting too much volume, but I do like the uh, this b the beginnings of this silhouette. So let me just pull some of this back. It helps to get blood flowing to your head. Yeah, I don't I don't think so. I'm I'm not falling for this. <laughs> Coward. <laughs> Uh, I could do a handstand. <laughs> I could do a handstand if I wanted once until I break my neck, yeah? <laughs> uh, Julie's gonna go run some errands. Well, enjoy. Enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, I hope to see you maybe in the next one. Have fun. Have fun erranding. You can do it better. All right, take a take a pic, take take a video, and then you can share the uh, the link in the chat of you doing a beautiful handstand, and then I will I will do a handstand then. All right, let's see it. I'm this is I'm, I'm not lying either. This is you know I'll totally do it. Actually, hop hop on Twitch, hop on a live stream. Uh, set the game that you're playing to you as handstands, and we can all join in and just watch. Why watch sculpting when you can watch somebody do handstands? It's way more entertaining. Uh, yes, you can judge. You can judge the the handstand competition. Absolutely. All right, uh, so I'm getting to a point where I am going to combine these. But before you do that, what I like to do typically is give a little bit of uh, extra room around the corners of the mouth. A lot of the time you don't want uh, too much of this merging together. So we're just gonna make a little extra room here. And... So what I will probably end up doing for this this puppy, since I will be printing him, is I will most likely be um, be closing the mouth because this is probably going to print at around mm, probably under two inches, maybe two inches at the most. And that lower mouth there will be very narrow, very thin. And because that's unsupported there, uh, we could run into a lot of issues with that failing during printing. And um, we're definitely going to want that to be able to print. So to make sure that that happens, closing the mouth uh, will make that quite a bit easier. So I'm thinking that maybe, maybe if we just get this outer ridge here, maybe this will just be easier to do this this way. Just like tuck this in a little bit more. Because we can still have the tongue sticking out through his closed mouth. Try playing with that a little bit. Let's try doing it all at once here in transpose. The stuff of nightmares. <laughs> Uh, 
I, uh, I want a little bit more of a plane change right here too. So a little bit of a up and then back. Try to get them a little bit more squared off on the head, a little bit more flat up top from the profile specifically. Want it to still be rounded from the front there. But just getting this plain change here to feel a little bit better. It's kind of tough. Mainly looking at that profile view that I've shown off before. Did a Fryden much bork? <laughs> yes. Uh, you have some old attempts from some early, uh, or some old clips from some early attempts. I see. Uh, that I'm not even gonna click that link because I'm gonna call BS. I'm gonna call BS and say it's not you. The sounds. The sounds like a fish story. <laughs> Beepus and Prongles. Wow. Good old Beepus. I'm sorry. That's just... That's the way it goes sometimes. Wow, this is. This is why uh, dogs are the, or seals. Seals are the dogs of the sea. Seals would look just like dogs if they, uh, if they had ears. Can confirm. Can confirm. We have deduced with science. Seal. Seal. It's that easy. Hide the ears. I'm kind of getting used to the uh, pen now that I've been using it for the past almost three hours. Uh, it is still annoying that I have to change the way I use it, but, you know, it's a little bit better now. I'm sure I'll get used to it more with time. And maybe, maybe avoid purchasing a new pen. Because those are very expensive. I don't know with good con if I could with good conscience buy a new pen just because one of the buttons stopped working. And maybe, I, I'm pretty sure it is a hardware issue based on me rolling back the driver to where I had it and it still didn't work, started acting up again. This is something that started happening very recently, so I'm thinking, uh, thinking that it's definitely a hardware issue. We've got a good old blep, good old blep going on here. So what's going to happen during 3D printing, even something like this, the th how thin that tongue gets there, what we might have to do is do something with like drafting it back to avoid it getting too thin or uh, rotating it even more or you know just trying to find a creative solution so we don't get too thin in this area, like pulling the chin forward, really anything we can to avoid very thin areas. The other area where we're gonna have issues is the uh, the ears. I like the silhouette that we get from this sh this specific shape in the ears, but we might have to do some stuff to avoid uh, kind of like this big opening back here. We'll figure it out, and I'm sure it'll be a combination of thickening up areas and all sorts of stuff. 
but um, I don't like to focus specifically too much on that while I'm sculpting. I tend to keep a lot of that in the back of my head, uh, but I will do stuff to avoid some of the major issues while I am sculpting. For the most part, though, I think uh, I think we'll be we'll be all right. I don't think there's too much here that we need to worry about. I uh, I did this wrong. Stop! Stop! There we go. Jeez. The terrible selection. Alright, next let's uh, square out our mouth and probably make this shorter. Hmm. Kinda hard to say. Let's try making it a little bit shorter. Starting to get closer back into that likeness. Like I said, you gotta bake, uh, bake. You gotta bake stuff. You gotta break stuff before you can fix a lot of, a lot of these things. So I've been trying to go back and fix some fundamental things that were kind of off here, but let's see. I'm going to leave that hard transition through there. Let's head back to uh, subtools. <laughs> Bug eyes! There we go beautiful. This is what it must feel like when a human hides the food from a dog. <laughs> Betrayed. <laughs> Betrayal. <laughs> How much longer is the stream? Uh, you got somewhere to be? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, probably like another hour or so. I typically stream for like around four hours roughly. Uh, every day. Every day except for Sunday. Same time. Uh, noon Eastern. Except for Tuesdays. Uh, it's still noon Eastern, but I also stream on the Pixelogic ZBrush channel at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern, Eastern Standard. Uh, yes, don't bake the dog. <laughs> I will not. I will not be baking the dog. We will break the dog. I'm very sensitive there with the pen. Experiencing all sorts of weird pen issues, aren't I? Pull this out a little bit more here. It might be easier to just do this with my move brush. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that's just pulled out too far there on the side of the the mouth. Let's use move back face masking. Make that area a little bit more tight. There we go, that's more what I was trying to get to happen there.
<laughs> yeah, don't you like hot dogs? Come on. How else are you gonna get a hot dog? You gotta bake a dog, right? Get it nice and nice and hot. Hence, hot dog. I have uh, I've never eaten dog. I can proudly say that I know of. I have had deer though, so our last sculpt, Bambi, was not safe. <laughs> like I said, deer is very gamey though, like you have to spice the crap out of it before it tastes good. Let's do a little damn standard here. Lazy mouse. I said lazy mouse, please. Come on. And uh, I think we're too far out here. It's kind of like, let's flatten this. I don't want this to feel stuck on. I need it to uh, flow between these shapes and blend nicely. And this is something that, you know, is really, I think, tough to do, especially for people that are new to sculpting in ZBrush. Because it's so easy for you to just apply a couple different sub tools and keep going, but, you know. Definitely much easier, much easier in digital than it would be in traditional, but even even still, you know, it's tough to uh, blend between shapes and keep it, keep it consistent. If we're looking through here, you know, my silhouette's kind of got all these like little rocky areas. And I've kind of done that purposefully over time to build up some additional volume here. I think I'm going to get rid of a lot of that though, as we're heading more into uh, stylization. Now that we've started to get a little bit more of the likeness, I think um, going more in a direction of stylization at this point is probably going to be probably going to be a good idea since that is our end goal. <laughs> ATC heading out, no problem. We'll catch you next time. Running with your tail between your legs. Very nice, very nice. All right, let's make sure that's flowing nicely. And a lot of this stuff that we've kept intentionally dirty, we will start cleaning this stuff up slowly, but you know, for the most part, a lot of this isn't that bad. It's, it's not really that hard to clean up. Oh, that was terrible. Let's try that again. There we go. Um, a lot of this isn't super difficult to clean up on the surface, like these little pockmarky type areas. It's just a matter of cleaning it up and also um, getting those major planes to still read nicely. I know, um, I know it's really hard to, for people that are new, trying to get that 
you know, I think it in general, in general, it's really hard to get that nice, nice clean surface. I do think subdivisions will help you out if you're in an area where you're trying to sculpt up some shape, something like what I just did with the top of this nose. I've really like, really cleaned up this silhouette and given it like a nice flow up between the nose and the brow on top at least. Now I'm trying to work on the, um, the area here. Let's see. Trying to figure out that expression. But yeah, same same kind of technique. I'm mainly just very gently smoothing out through my subdivs. I am using some of my clay tubes and trim dynamic brush, but all of that kind of combined, just get the result that I need. You know, it doesn't really matter. You, know, you don't have to use these specific brushes that I'm using. It's just what I'm used to using. There are plenty of other brushes that you can use instead. Other trim brushes, other polish and H polish brushes that you can try using. You can use the standard brush to do some of this stuff. Like, it just comes down to preference. Definitely uh, very messy through this area. Probably gonna dynamesh a lot of that out. We'll see. Make a video game based on deer. Uh, you play someone uh, to put out a review saying, oh dear, it's a very good game. I'm sure there are, there's like those um, arcade games where you hunt deer, right? Uh, Cabela's or whatever, aren't those a thing? I'm sure this already exists and I'm sure there are all sorts of terrible, terrible, terrible puns for, the, for those games. <laughs> Let's do some general upkeep cleanup since we're talking about going going towards more stylization now. So I'll do that for a little bit here. Mainly using some trim right now. Alright, so see this huge pinch right here and how how much that's warping our geometry. I am going to run a Dynamesh. Let's try around 400 maybe. Okay, should work. And the point of that Dynamesh is it gets rid of all that pinching. The geometry is still here keeping that, sh uh, keeping that shape, but, um, but the pinch is gone. Like the topology is no longer all crazy through there. So that's a little bit better. And I will remesh this again, but I just need to uh, clean up this surface and I can't really clean it up when I have topology that's, you know, this tight. That's, that's not really something you can work with. Very sunken in around the eyes. Just trying to use a trim brush right now. I'll, I might. Let's let's grab our clay tubes and just very gently try to uh, flip this surface in a little bit. Getting a little bit more messy through here, but that's okay. That's, this kind of stuff is really easy to fix. Here, let's uh, let's do a quick mask. Try that again. 
and we're getting some extra masks over here because I'm masking through my surface. It cuts through to the other side. But it's not too hard to uh, get rid of. Delete that real quick. Maybe a little too sunken in. I don't know. And I'm not, you know, I'm trying to look at some different angles here because the fur is very dark in some areas and it's kind of tricking my eyes into what's exactly, you know, something that's changing in the form and something that's more so just like the fur color is lighter there or darker there. So some of these areas can be a little, a little tricky. We're taking our time though. I'm trying to, that's why I have a few different reference images. Some of them even being from the same angle, but uh, just a little bit more helpful with different lighting conditions. Which is also something I recommend that if you don't do, you definitely should do while you're sculpting. Shift your light around as much as you can. Typically what I do is I keep that top light for the most part, and then I'll put it on a front light if I'm having trouble seeing the underside of something, or I'll just straight up flip it to the underside and start sculpting that way. You can also move it to the left and right and, you know, all around wherever you need to. That's up in your light menu right up here. You can just click and drag your light around. For the most part, though, I just keep that in the default position up top. Uh, any plans for making more human characters? Yes, of course, of course. We'll be doing a lot more. A lot more characters. You need to oogle the workflow, he said. Yeah. Uh, if if you are, you know, there's there's tons of videos on my YouTube channel as well for stuff that I have done in the past. If you're looking for more workflow stuff. And again, I do have plans for a new course coming up. A little bit more of a professional thing that I'm going to put a lot more time into than uh, these streams, obviously. Something new from a gum road. I've mentioned it a few times, but you know it's still a pretty long way out. But based on what people ask for the most, it's kind of what I'm going to be working on next. I'll, I'll have more info. I sound I sound so cryptic. I'll have more info uh, in a little bit soon, soonish, on what that will be. I'm trying to get that surface to change here a little bit more. That's not doing what I want. So that's why I put that hard cut, that really tight pinch. Let's try move accu curve. Really trying to get that to move. So we're getting a little bit of a concave curve there. Just not wanting to turn. Uh, faces are kicking your butt. Well, faces are definitely, uh, you know, one of the hardest things to sculpt, in my opinion. There's a lot that you can mess up. <laughs> uh, do you have any favorite reference sheet or source for anatomy reference for stylized characters like the mummy? Um, I don't think that was a very good reference 
for uh, anatomy. Uh, it had a really good silhouette on that character that I liked a lot, but that's about it. Um, uh, I do have some references, but I, I just have like a folder full of a bunch of images that essentially stuff that I've saved over a long period of time for just stuff. What I recommend doing is if you're browsing ArtStation or Twitter or uh, any like Pinterest, whatever, if you find something cool, something that you like, uh, just save it in a folder somewhere and uh, start making a bunch of folders for different stuff that you like. Or you can save it directly to Pinterest. I know a lot of people uh, like doing that. Uh, I prefer just kind of like having the images so I can reference them later. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I got I got a ton of ton of stuff. I don't have like one in particular that I'm like this. This is my ideal that I always shoot for. So I'm always doing so many different things. This is why we like to keep our eyelids separate. Folygon quotes out of context, we kept stuff intentionally dirty. <laughs> yes. Keep that surface dirty. No reason to clean up right now. We'll get to it later. All right, we do have a, a good start here. Uh, we still have a long way to go on this. Um, but I do like a lot of what, what I am seeing. Uh, and I do dislike also a lot of what I'm seeing, especially around here, mainly, you know, in the eyes and everything else. This is going to be the, this will be an area that we work on for quite a long time. Right around in this area. As we start to get more and more into a stylization and like really defining a lot of these plane changes. Uh, but that'll be fun. That'll be, f <coughs> excuse me, a lot of fun to work on. I'm excited to continue pushing on that. But I am getting pretty hungry, and it is way past lunch rooney time here for me. So we won't go too much longer here. But if you guys do have any other questions here, I would love to answer what I can. So if you don't feel like you have to wait till I'm working on something specific if you have a, a question like if you have a question about human eyes or you know something that I'm not even working on feel free to fire away I'll answer whatever I can typically if I'm not doing it right now I, I can at least shoot you a link to something where I've done it in the past and you can see the process or the tools and techniques for how to do that Still kind of just messing around here in Dynamesh, keeping things really rough. It's uh, it's kind of annoying me right now though, so I'm about to remesh this. And we'll probably mess with this expression a lot more as well. There, there's going to be a lot that we mess with. Let me see here. Yeah. Do a quick remesh. Let's do. We did five before. I'm gonna make that just a little bit lower. <clears throat> yes, we have a seal base as well. We can just turn off the ears and go. <laughs> you have a ton of questions, but you keep forgetting them. Oh no. All right, 
Let's um, close holes really quick. Polygroup, subdivide, project. Sometimes the projection goes so fast that I can't tell if it's done or not. <laughs> There's supposed to be a loading bar that goes across the top of your screen for any operation that uses your CPU, which there really aren't that many in ZBrush that are too CPU heavy. I don't know why the loading bar isn't going. But, uh, yes, it is not showing up. Those are actually pretty quick. Pretty quick uh, remeshes, so I'm or projections, so I'm happy with that. All right, let's start cleaning up our surface some more. change that I've noticed through here. I need this, I need my sister's doll. I need to go over there. Start feeling around on his face. Find where all his bony landmarks are. All the fur is hard to see through. Figure out what's going on. So I'm going to have a little bit more of a, a floof out around the, the collar, and we'll do that more next time. But like I said, I think, uh, I think we have a decent base here to kind of move on from here, and uh, we will be doing that tomorrow, same time, same place. So thank you guys for coming and hanging out, I appreciate it greatly. Hope that maybe you have learned something new, coming here and hanging out, and the Last thing that I will shout out here on the stream is just my Gumroad one last time. It's uh, gumroad.com slash polygon. There's a link down below. Uh, if you're brand new to ZBrush and digital sculpting, uh, I would highly recommend my ZBrush Quick Start course. It's about a two hour uh, video. Uh, or it's a length of two hours. What am I trying to say? Words. Uh, it's about two hours long uh, and includes a, a ton of stuff to just get you up and ready in ZBrush as quick as possible. I have some intermediate and more advanced stuff on there as well. Uh, that you uh, that you might want to check out, and then I got some brushes, materials, base meshes, a uh, bunch of bunch of cheap stuff where you can get like five of these mannequins for only a doll hair, and yeah, I don't know, that, that's about it. I, I won't talk too much more about it, but uh, yes, again, I do appreciate you guys coming and hanging out tomorrow two or not two uh, noon noon, and then tomorrow at six EST on the Pixelogic ZBrush channel. We will be working on our puppy doge some more there tomorrow. Uh, thank you, Hud Boy. It has been fun. And Hip Hop Bebop. Thanks, guys. And let's find somebody to give a raid to real quick. Anybody know know of anybody online that we want to shoot a raid to? Let's see. I like to find sculptors, typically, but if there's not a sculptor... Dang, art was really far down there that time. If there's not a sculptor, maybe somebody that's painting some minis or, or doing anything like that. Those are always fun to find. Let's see. Or anybody that I know. <laughs> Somebody is, uh, somebody's drawing Waluigi and uh, I think we need to raid this person. Because <laughs> we were talking about Smash Bros before. So it only seems appropriate that we we raid Waluigi here. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, guys. You guys uh, have a great rest of your day. And uh, I hope to see you guys again tomorrow, either here on my channel at noon or on the Pixelogic channel. Yes. Wow. <laughs> All right. See you, gang.